This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is a NUC party. Let's face it, right? So this is the NUC 13 Extreme with Intel Well 13th generation processors inside desktop processors. NUCs are typically, when people think of a NUC, which stands for next unit of computing, if anybody even thinks about that anymore, they've always been small form factor PCs. I mean, typically you think of ones that are like this, make a Mac mini look kind of a little bit big, right? So they go in different size. The enthusiast model, which we'll also review, is the in-betweener. And this is what the last generation of the Extreme looked like. Look at the difference in size, right? This is still kind of amazing. You've got massive power in here, a full desktop RTX 3080, and this little case, it's around eight liters. Now we've gone up to 13.9 liters, almost 14. Is it still a knock? Do you even care because of the improvements that this big chassis has afforded? Well, big is a relative term here. We're gonna find out now. So while the NUC 12 Extreme still could sort of fit the bill of mobile, as in mobile tech review, right? Because you could pick this up, carry this around, take it to your friend's house, whatever, move it from the TV to another room because you've been kicked out of the living room if somebody wants to watch TV. This is still a pretty small form factor PC, right? It's small, but it's also lost the spirit of knockiness. But at the same time, I think Intel faced the fact here that it was an Extreme and is an Extreme PC, and there's only so much you can do when you've got this much space inside, right? Especially because we know that processors are getting faster right now by being a bit more power hungry. And the same thing is true for GPUs. Look at the NVIDIA RTX 4000 series versus the 3000 series. They're using more power than ever. They're making more heat. So you need a bigger case. All right. Got that out of the way. There is the excuse for the size of this. And believe me, the creature comforts when you're working on it are many because you have more space. But, uh, there's always with NUX, the price. You don't buy these because these are cheaper than anything else you can buy. In fact, they're typically on the more expensive side. You're buying them for the magnificence of engineering that's involved in smallification, but not just smallification. And I would still say that this here with a 13900K processor and an RTX 3080 Ti inside is a very powerful PC. This is smaller than most desktop gaming PCs, but the build quality on these and the engineering are impeccable. I mean, no matter which of the more picky hardware channels you watch, they're going to say the same thing, I bet, that it's put together well, it's designed well. The, the thought that went into how you get to each element inside of here is really well done. So you're paying for that stuff. So it's also obviously very first build friendly for, the, for those of you who are building a PC for the first time because it is really one of the easiest to work on and upgrade too. But I'm not sure first time builders are typically going to spend money in this order of magnitude. Now this is sold as a bare bones kit. So Intel says it's going to be around $1,179 to $1,550, depending on whether you want to go with the Core i5, a Core i7, or a Core i9. They're all K unlocked processors. Um, it's going to be available in the United States Q1 2023, but so far the pre-order prices I'm seeing look a little bit higher than that, so we'll see where it goes. Now for those of you who want to buy it with the RAM and the SSDs and stuff put in, then simply NUC sells them, but they do charge quite a price premium for doing that for you, and it's not hard. In fact, it's kind of fun. I mean, this is, you know, electronics Lego here. Go for it. Uh, Simply NUC doesn't even bother trying to offer GPUs anymore because of the GPU crisis that we had during 2020, 2021. They were hard to get a hold of. They are easier to get a hold of now, but they're often marked up anyway, so it's up to you to source the GPU. This does have integrated Intel 770 UHD graphics on board, but obviously if you're buying something this powerful, you want a GPU inside, right? In terms of I.O., you're not suffering here. You have a full set of I.O. on the back, including two Thunderbolt 4, six USB-A 3.2 ports, a USB-C port on the front, two more USB-A's, a headphone jack on the front, and three audio jacks on the back, HDMI 2.1, and that's connected to integrated graphics. We're not talking about whatever GPU you put on, whatever ports you're getting from that. And 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit Ethernet. And you have killer Wi-Fi on board. It's Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.2. The chopstick style antennas come with it that you screw on the back. Oh, and you've also got 7.1 audio out either via HDMI or USB C display port, and you have four RGB headers which can support up to 120 LEDs. Uh, speaking of the LEDs and case and customization, uh, this one here is much calmer. And now Intel says instead of putting this skull on it like they usually do, which is kind of cool and stuff, uh, because it's an all metal case, you can customize it the way you want. 
paint it, decal it, you know, that sort of thing. Now you don't want to cover this much of this area with decals though, because with NUX, typically every surface has vents. I mean, this is mesh, this is mesh, this is mesh, the bottom is mesh. It's all well ventilated and you've got airflow going sideways, not front to back, which probably makes some sense because you've got a bigger plane to work with on the sides versus the front to back and something this narrow. So now you have two 120 millimeter fans. The PSU has its own fan on board. And of course your GPU will have its fan. So you've got really good airflow and cooling going on here. That power supply, by the way, is 750 watts. It supports a GPU up to 450 watts, which in theory should support a 4090 RTX card. And also it's 80 plus gold rated, so it's pretty efficient. And it's modular now. It's actually pretty easy to get to. It's a compact one, but it's pretty easy to get to. So inside we have 125 watt desktop processors, not 65 watt, no, no, we're not slumming at all here. So that's the full Monty here. The only difference between this and a bigger PC case build is the fact that PL2 is at 250 versus sometimes 350. So they have to give some concessions to the fact this is not a behemoth and you don't have room for liquid cooling or something like that on board. Compute element has gotten longer in this and we'll take it apart and discuss that a little bit more because it's added a very large heat sink area on the end to, well, improve cooling, right? So is that effective? I can say it certainly is. Now with the NUC 11 Extreme, the predecessor to this NUC 12, that thing was hot and loud. Let me tell you, it was kind of annoyingly loud. It was as noisy as a gaming laptop and part of the reason you use a desktop-y thing is to avoid some of that. The 12 got better. It's not really all that loud. This one is very quiet. If you're running it on the default balance profile, uh, even if you run on cool, it's not that loud. It's certainly under 50 decibels. So that is a lot quieter than any gaming laptop. And if you put this, say, down a bit away from you below your desk on some kind of stand or something like that, you just really won't even hear it when you're gaming. I mean, a little whoosh of air, but it's, it's really well done in terms of the thermals on board. In terms of the performance, well, I mean, you know, the NUX have always been for gaming people, but it's also great for Photoshop, Premiere. I mean, Photoshop, this is a waste of horsepower, honestly, for most people. People. But if you're doing Adobe Premiere, anything like that, CAD 3D, all that stuff, certainly it's very capable also as well. And it scores really well in Puget Systems Benchmark. And in games, it does fantastic. We benchmark the games at 2K resolution, 2560 by 1440, because that's a monitor I had handy to plug in. That's a gaming monitor. And it does great. You can run games at 4K on this, no problem. It's, it's quite powerful. So I'm not feeling the hurt from not having a higher PL2 limit on this. It's fine because it's more than powerful enough to play any AAA title or to work professionally in Adobe Premiere or to do Blender renders till the cows come home. All right, to get inside, you start with the top cover. There's a thumb screw here and well, you just unscrew the thumb screw, right? And then you can just lift it up. Ta-da! When you lift it up, the front cover will just, well, kind of fall away. So that's taken care of. So all mesh, all ventilation, and there, there are no cables here for where the power button is and these here. This is just simply a cover over those things. So you don't have to worry about any cables. And then if you want to take off the side covers, which well, you do, you just push away and push away and two side covers, voila. And then we're going to want to remove four screws to our inset and there's one on each side so we can lift off this bracket over here. And up here we have our compute unit which is connected via PCIe 5. So it's interesting, it's mounted like a graphics card basically and the graphics card mounts upward in here. Again, up to a three slot GPU. So pretty interesting. So to release this, you're actually gonna use a lever just like you would on a GPU in a PCI slot. Now there is one more screw over here that screws into the back of the compute unit by the I.O. grouping right there. So unscrew that. And then there's only one cable of this connected. Unlike the NUC 12 Extreme, which had so many cables, basically most everything just connects via the, the data connector down here. So this is just this one here that connects to the front header. All right, so here, these are your two RAM slots. It takes SODIMMs, laptop style memory. This is DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM that we have in here. 64 gigs will be the max. And this is the Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6E card with Bluetooth. So that's actually socketed in case you want it. We'll upgrade that. So the lever is underneath here. And to take this out, and you're asking, why do I have to do that? Well, to access the SSDs. So then they push the lever 
and then you can gently pull this out. So now you can lift this out, be mindful of the I.O. connectors through the hole here, and then don't like jam them. So this is what I'm saying about this is a longer compute unit. One of the things about Intel's compute units is, in theory, you can upgrade in the next generation by slotting in a new card. But obviously with something this long, you're not going to put this in a NUC 12 Extreme, for example. But right here, all of this is cooling. This is the new add-on. The fan, you can see that for yourself. And your SSDs go behind these doors here. Now these are CPU connected. You've got three available here. I don't think it matters really which one you put in there. And if you want to add even more storage, there's actually a section on the back side where you can mount some two and a half inch SATA 3 SSDs. So this is why you would have to take it out so you can put your storage in or if you want to upgrade your storage. So if you did want to mount some two and a half inch, you know, SSDs, this is the area in here, this plate that's removable as well. So that's where you would do it. This is the PSU fan over here keeping the power supply cool. And this is the header board that it sockets into here with some connectors which you don't have to touch, that's all nice. And the GPU is basically just underneath here and sockets in up to three slots wide with a variety of connectors available for you to power this thing up. So that's the inter internal architecture. As you can see, that's really easy, really tidy, and really well done. This is one of the things I like about NUX. And this is a lot easier than taking apart a NUX 12 Extreme because, well, we have a whole lot more space here, right? So there's that. So, you know, it's expensive, but I have to admit, I really like the NUC 13 Extreme. It's also bigger, I'll grant you that, but it's still compact enough that I think most of us can find a way to fit this someplace easily enough, especially compared to most tower gaming PCs, you know. The build quality on this, the thought to the design, how easy it is to access the components, the modularity of it is great. The fact that you can put a triple slot GPU inside of this, <laughs> you know, that's nice, and that's certainly an improvement from the previous generation. Fun, expensive, expensive fun. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.